The universe is so vast, some astronomers have decided to make a map of exactly where we are. Just as Galileo tried to make sense of our place in the heavens, here at Apache Point, New Mexico, a group of astronomers are trying to locate our position by constructing the biggest map that anyone has ever seen. Built specifically to map over a million galaxies, this is the home of the Sloan Sky Survey. Over a period of five years, astronomer Jim Gunn and his colleagues are about to start mapping our exact position in the universe. We're in a galaxy, which is not a particularly remarkable galaxy, but this 3D picture that we will make of the nearby universe tells us how we fit into this, this vast scheme of things that is the universe, and I think will give us a much better idea of our place by systematically scanning the entire night sky from a site high above the desert floor, the results will be plotted not as a two-dimensional route map, but a fully interactive three-dimensional guide to the universe. If you think about that from a kind of cinematic point of view, one could take this map very easily, put this map on a computer, and enable you to rotate the map, to fly through space, if you like, to look at our galaxy from outside, to look at the other galaxies around us from the other side, and take not only from any angle you want, but from any place in this map, and look out and see what it's like to be somewhere else in the universe than what we are, which is, of course, what you see in science fiction films all the time, but you will actually be able to do it with the galaxies that are there. Jim Gunn's survey is an ambitious project, and it's only just beginning. This is how the final map may look. It's a computer simulation of superclusters of galaxies massed together in giant blobs. You are here. This would be the position of our planet, our solar system, and our own Milky Way. But on this scale, it would be impossible to see us or even any of our neighboring galaxies. This is a map of everything we can see. Everything in the universe, all the visible stars and galaxies, were born in the same furnace, the Big Bang. A ball of intense heat still cooling as it continues to expand. Cosmologists are not only confident that they have unearthed the universe's past, but that they can also predict its future. Space, like the surface of hot-blown glass, cools as it expands. Just as flecks of color embedded in the glass move further apart the more it stretches, so do the galaxies. Space is expanding in all directions at once. Modern cosmologists are now trying to measure if this expansion will continue forever. How will the universe end? The key to the future of the universe was discovered long before modern astronomers built their giant telescopes. Back in the 1660s, when Sir Isaac Newton had an encounter with a falling apple and discovered gravity. Newton formulated laws of physics which formed the basis of modern science. He realized that the same force that takes an apple and pulls it down from a tree towards the Earth pulls the moon towards the Earth, and in fact pulls the Earth towards the sun and pulls the sun towards the, the center of our galaxy. But in fact, gravity is the weakest force in nature. If you wanted to show someone how weak gravity is, just take a friend to the top of a tall building and push them off. And they'll, it may take 12 stories for them to fall and gravity to accelerate them all the way down to the ground. But electricity and magnetism in a, in a fraction of a second and a fraction of an inch will stop them. Because the reason you don't go through things is not that 
the atoms in your body hit the atoms in the table, but rather it's the electric fields between those atoms that stop you. So electricity and magnetism stops you in a fraction of a second, even though it takes gravity all that time to accelerate you. Gravity may be the weakest force, but it's the force that holds the planets and the stars together. After Newton, perhaps the greatest scientist and mathematician of all time was Albert Einstein. Einstein had been an unremarkable student and his first job was as a clerk in the local patent office. His general theory of relativity, announced in 1915, explained for the very first time how everything within the universe interacts. Space, matter, even time. His calculations told him that the stars and galaxies should exert a gravitational pull on each other and should eventually collapse together in a catastrophic fireball. But they hadn't collapsed, so to make his equations work, he invented a special repulsive force. But it was a makeshift solution, and deep down, Einstein knew it. Then, a decade later, along came a man with the solution to Einstein's puzzle. Here, at the Mount Wilson Observatory in California, Edwin Hubble took the first steps towards forecasting the fate of our entire universe. Hubble was a World War I veteran and a brilliant lawyer. When he turned his renowned skills to astronomy, he came up with a remarkable discovery that would change the way we view the universe forever. He made the astronomical discovery of the century that the universe was expanding. 75 years on, measuring the precise speed of that expansion is the job of astronomer Wendy Friedman. What Hubble found was that almost all galaxies appear to be moving away from us. And this led to the idea that the universe is expanding. Here was evidence for the first time that the universe was actually in motion, that galaxies are moving apart. What that means is that you can essentially extrapolate backwards in time. It's like running a film in reverse. If galaxies are expanding now, then at some time in the past, they must have been closer and closer together. And what that implies is that sometime early in the history of the universe, galaxies would have been much closer together. The matter in the universe it would have been much denser and much hotter. And this gave rise to the idea of a Big Bang universe. Hubble's revelation stood the astronomical community's understanding of the cosmos on its head. He'd used the same technique that police forces around the world use today to catch speeding motorists. Hubble used the astronomical equivalent of a police radar. Instead of using radar signals, Hubble measured the light that came from distant galaxies. He knew that their color would be slightly altered if they were traveling towards or away from us. If an object is moving away from us, then the light from that object will be shifted toward the red part of the spectrum. If an object is coming towards us, the light will be shifted toward the blue part of the spectrum. 